Welcome to Markitecture, where you can get smart fast with in-depth interviews of leading technology vendors. I'm Jeremy Kagan, and I'm here with Dan Pantello, the CEO of Marpipe. Dan, it's nice to have you here. It looks like you've got uh, enough coffee to make it through the interview. I'm very excited. I do want to uh, disclose to everyone that Ari Paparo, the founder of Markitecture, is actually an angel investor in your company. So I have to be really tough on you to make up for that. Let's do it. I'm ready. Hold my feet to the fire. <laughs> Great. Well, I wanted to make sure we, uh, we started with the most obvious question, which is, what does your company do? Yeah. So Marpipe, in a very simple terms in one sentence, automates the creative testing process for brands. So you could think of us as like an operating system, like an OS for the entire creative testing process. What the product actually looks like though, is you could think of it as like a design platform, like a Canva or something similar, specifically built for advertising creatives and marketers who are interested in testing a lot of things at a very high volume. So tell me exactly, like, what does your product do and how it works exactly? You know, walk me through uh, the user experience, if you will. Yeah. So in order to automate the creative testing process, unfortunately, to our dismay, we found out that you do need to build a creative platform from scratch that's purpose-built for this, right? So the reason why is... Every piece of ad creative is actually just like a bunch of visual variables or assets just layered on top of each other, right? So imagine, if you will, an ad that looks like there's a background color, there's a product image um, on mm -hmm. the left, and then there's some copy and some words on the right. Very simple piece of ad creative, right? Background color, product image, copy. That's three layers. Each one of these layers, if changed, has a really big impact on performance. So the way that Marpipe works is you build your creative in Marpipe like you would in any other design platform. We've built it such that it's very familiar to creatives and marketers who have used any of these other platforms before. Like what platforms? Uh, like Canva or Adobe um, or even Figma. Um, so it is a, it's a free form canvas tool. And so when you layer these, cre when you build your creative, the one thing that separates Marpipe from what you're gonna see that's out there on the market today is that the next step is called variance mode, which is where you can tie different variables to each of these variants as a placeholder. So with that example, imagine you could say for the background color, I want to test these five different background color options for the product image, five different product image versions. And then for the copy, five different versions of the copy. What Marpipe will do is then render out every permutation in a multivariate grid. So that would be five times five times five. In the work of making one simple ad, you could create 125 ads in a multivariate grid. And then uh, famously, the problem with a lot of these creative solutions is if I just dump a bunch of creative on your desk, you as a media buyer, what do you do next? Well, you know, that's really hard work to actually launch and set up and run in a controlled as possible environment, all of those different creatives. So Marbuck automates that piece too. We plug into the APIs of Facebook, Instagram, Google Display, and then many more coming soon. And allow you to just, with a simple click of a button, launch all of those permutations into your live ad accounts against your live audience and start collecting real live performance data. Clicks, purchases, whatever you're optimizing for. And then very quickly discover what's the best case scenario. So what's first place out of 125 in that instance? That is going to be a big performance winner. A performance marketer would love to just take that and scale it. But then the creatives will also learn why, right? Which is what you don't learn from an A-B test. Uh, you actually get to understand which visual variables, you know, color number three when used, no matter what it's combined with, lifts performance by 73%. Wow, that's a big outlier variable. So let's do more of that. That's the idea. Okay, I have a couple of uh, follow-up questions to that. But first, um, you mentioned uh, some competitors, and it sounds like your variable mode is what differentiates you. But can you tell me who the direct competitors are for you? Like, who would people be using if they weren't using you and trying to do this kind of testing? I would say that services businesses are really our main competitors. So people who offer this as services and do it manually. We also do get compared to other companies in the space that, in our perspective, do other things that also have services components layered into them. Um, and so 
just to, um, I guess, articulate the major differentiating factor is this spectrum between fully self-serve and I guess you could call it like a managed service where people are making creative by hand for you and doing things for you by as a service. So you could look at companies like Vidmob, right? Which I would say is, you know, more, more on the for much larger enterprises that professionalizes that as a service. We are catering to like a self-serve audience where folks who in those teams want to be able to dive in and do it themselves in kind of a self-serve interface. Then I'd also say there's like this whole DCO bucket, which we do very frequently get the question, is creative testing, like automated creative testing, is that like dynamic creative optimization? And it's not, it's totally different products. That was actually uh, one of my questions. So please dig in. (laughs) Yeah, this is a frequent thing when folks jump on demos from big brands, they're like, well, we use a DCO solution. So a lot of our, a lot of our customers also use a DCO solution, right? You could look to things like Smartly. I mean, there's a whole ecosystem of DCO tools. They've been around for a very long time. What you'll see there is dynamic creative optimization allows you to customize how your creative appears when it's served, depending on various environmental factors, which could be the weather in Houston today. It could be what device someone is viewing the ad on. So for instance, if I'm McDonald's and I'm running an ad and the temperature in Houston is above 100 degrees today, my ad creative can say, come to McDonald's and have a nice cold Coca-Cola to cool off instead of the typical Big Mac ad that I would serve in that region, right? So we're customizing it live based on environmental factors, which is great. It works really well. This is good for performance to be able to tailor it and customize how an ad is served and what it says based on these environmental factors that may be present at the moment. So let's say the weather is 100 degrees in Houston today and you're serving that ice cold Coca-Cola, let's cool off ad creative. What does that look like? Does it have a bottle or a cup? What is the background color? What does the copy actually say? How does it say cool off? These are things that today, when you're answering the inputs to DCO, you have to make arbitrary creative decisions about. Marbive allows you to test all of those things, right? So it's it's actually, it's it's the creative testing that goes before you plug something in to scale in a DCO capacity. Um, so you could think of it as like a pre-testing, pre-concept testing for the things that you'd want to scale. It's also, you could think of it as a difference between, you know, DCO is a scaled campaign. Creative testing is just that testing, which is a smaller percentage, much smaller percentage of your budget before you move things into scale. Thanks for listening. To hear the complete interview, subscribe at architecture.tv. 